I break quarantine for you, my love. You're the only dream. Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz pianist Jeremy Siskin on the new 2022 CD, Songs of Rebirth, New Meditations on Rebirth, Reawakening, and Evolution. It is from the trio of pianist Jeremy Siskin, vocalist Nancy Harms, and saxophonist Lucas Pino. The pandemic shook and sometimes destroyed foundations that our lives were all built on. And this album is all about hope and rebuilding. The last time we spoke to Jeremy was back in January of 2020. He had a book and CD coming out, and that was right before the world shut down. We had a wide-ranging talk about that, the now, and the future. Enjoy. Hey, Joe, how are you? Hey, good, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. One of the last interviews before the world shut down we talked about your book and your new CD in January-ish of yeah. 2020. What a, what a different time on planet Earth. Yes, yes, indeed. And what a terrible time to put out an album. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. and it's but, not that great either. <laughs> yeah, well, but who knew? I mean, so I guess with that being the context, um, it, it was the Etudes book. And, and I'm wondering, did you get any promotion or did you get any traction at all off of that? It was pretty limited, um, you know, and I, I don't feel bad, right? Everybody's got a sob story about plans that they had, you know, that got canceled. So it's kind of par for the course, but it was kind of a weird project to begin with. <laughs> you know, these solo piano etudes that are kind of half classical, half jazz, and published in a book. So, I, you know, I got a couple of things here and there, but would it have been better if I'd been able to, you know, do my tour that I planned and hit 10 different cities and get in touch with local press? Sure, of course, it would have been better. So, um, yeah. you know, that's life. I'm certainly luckier than most. The fact that you and I are both still here and do it yeah. means that we're Absolutely. lucky, right? What was, the, what was the last gig you did before the world shut down? Uh, I have two that I, that I think of. So I, I, had, I did a house concert basically a week before everything, you know, went awry. And it, I really remember it as the last fun thing <laughs> um, that, that we did. But then, like, literally, I remember it was, like, a Wednesday night before. And, you know, it was that day that the NBA shut down and then, like, kind of everything dominoed from there. Um, we had a gig at the Blue Whale uh, with singer Aubrey Johnson everything was just crumbling around us. We kind of expected that it would get canceled, but they, they let us do it. And uh, it, it ended up being a great night. But yeah, you know, literally during our rehearsal, the drummer is, is Jacob Collier's drummer, and Jacob was calling and saying their whole, you know, world tour that was planned was canceled. And yeah, it's wild time. Wow. Yeah, well, you know, I guess it was a time of reflection. As much as there were bad, there were some other parts of this that, you know, we all had to kind of gather our strength. What did you learn about yourself over this last two years that maybe you didn't realize about yourself that's going to make you stronger as you promote the new album? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think one thing that everybody has hopefully learned or at least realized that we need to learn, you know, is that those external sources of gratification are pretty fleeting. And the real lasting way towards, I don't know, and maybe happiness or satisfaction with something like career or an art project, you know, it's not going to come from a blog post or a review or something, or, or even, you know, maybe an audience, right? All those things can be taken away. So ultimately, I think one of the things that it's taught me is you have to do this for yourself, ultimately. Not that, you know, we don't want to serve others and make music that other people enjoy. Of course, that's a big part of it. But if it's not self-nourishing, then, you know, then you're depending on other people for, for, that, all, for that, you know, deep satisfaction. And so I, I guess one of the lessons was that I, I needed to learn how to please myself <laughs> and be, be happy with, with the result rather than with external um, drivers. So your new album, Songs of Rebirth, clearly kind of, you know, talking about what, what's going on. It's new meditations on rebirth, reawakening, and evolution with your trio. Talk to me a little bit about, I mean, it, I know the last time we spoke, it came out before something we had no idea about it, but it seems like mm -hmm. now we're on the other end of this. What does the timing of this feel like for you? 
<laughs> you know, of course, in terms of the pandemic, we keep taking one step forward and two steps back or whatever the, the saying is. I wish that <laughs> both for my album's sake and for the world's sake that I was putting this out at a time when we could just be saying, oh, we're returning out into the world and living our most whole lives without any sort of fear. Um, but of course, it's not that straight of a path. Regardless of, of, of that, and really regardless of where the virus might be at, I think there's a societal rebirth that is happening and, and needs to happen, you know, really intentionally thinking about what we want the world to look like. How can we create that more of that world? And there was so much time for introspection during the pandemic um, and during, during lockdowns that it gives me a lot of hope that we can think about how we individually and collectively want to show up as we rebuild this world and try to construct something a little bit different, a little bit more equitable, a little bit more safe and, uh, and generous going forward. So your trio with Nancy and Lucas, talk to me a little bit about how you all came together and how did it feel in the studio and, and kind of just the final product? Yeah, so th this trio is really quite a long-term um, long term endeavor. I think our first record actually came out more than 10 years ago in 2011 or 2012. Uh, we started working together when all three of us lived in New York. And I guess technically none of us live in New York anymore. Um, Nancy is sometimes in Minnesota, sometimes in Denmark. I'm out here in California. And, and Lucas technically lives in New Jersey now. Well, I don't know if he wants me sharing that in public. But, uh, um, you know, even though we are all in different corners of the world, we've maintained close friendships and obviously, you know, musically when it's possible, we, we come together and we have a very long um, history of playing a lot of shows together. Uh, we've done over 150 house concerts in 25 different states. And this record was unique because I, I was trying to find some different ways that that group could operate. Um, so there's, for example, one, one piece where I'm not playing any chords, I'm just playing a single line melody. And so the three of us are kind of operating as a true trio with each of us just playing or singing one note at a time. Um, we had more moments where there were unison between Nancy and, and Lucas, uh, where maybe a bass clarinet and voice were together. Um, and then moments where Nancy and I were together. I almost borrowed more chamber music and classical um, devices to round out between the more jazz-based and improvisational things that we might do. And I think that the... the project space, whatever else you might want to say about it, um, it is pretty remarkable just in terms of the breadth of stylistic and arrangement styles that we cover. Um, so I think that's kind of fun to listen to. So what are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this album? A lot of things. I think whenever I put something out, I want people to access some emotions that they might not have accessed otherwise. I want them to feel their own creative power and, you know, to say, oh, this is something interesting that, that this person made. What could I make? What, what, what am I inspired to make? Um, and then there are parts that I hope just bring joy and, and laughter. There's some love songs here. There's some um, almost cabaret-style songs here. The final song is called Another Birthday, kind of a reflection about the doomsday march of getting older. Um, but done in kind of a funny, silly way. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for introspection um, and hope listening to an album like this. So have you done any live shows lately? Um, here and there, you know, it's kind of a, a smattering. I, I did get to finally play those Perpetual Motion Etudes in Carnegie Hall about a month ago, um, and that was definitely a highlight. So what are the crowds like? You know, I mean, I think there's going to be a different level of thirst and appreciation, but what are you noticing with crowds? I, I just think people are all over the map. You know, I definitely had people, and this was in, in March before this latest variant was, was really rising, but I feel like there's, there's some people who are still really scared and don't want to come to a large performance space. I think there are some people who you know, are really eager and very excited and, you know, people for whom it's their first time going to see a concert in two years and, you know, for some people that's just diving ahead first. For some people that means being very cautious. Um, and then there are also, of course, people who have kind of been going to shows like this all along and, and this was kind of the, you know, back to, to normalcy already. So I, I think more than anything, 
seeing people out and about in the world has made me realize that we're all living very different realities and our, you know, our, our needs and um, our practices are, are super different just depending on, on where we're at and what our tolerance yeah. for risk is, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's get to the good business here of telling everybody where they can get Songs of Rebirth, whether they want to buy it or stream it, and where they can catch you live and anything else related to your world of music. If you want to buy Songs of Rebirth, I've made it available both as a CD um, and a book. If, so if you'd like to follow along with the scores and even some transcriptions of the solos, um, there is a book, and that's the best purchased at jeremysiskin.com slash shop. You can also stream it basically anywhere that you would usually stream music on Spotify, on Apple Music, et cetera. Uh, you can also buy the album on Bandcamp if you uh, prefer to support in that way. I would also encourage anybody who's studying music or just interested to check out my YouTube channel. I have posted some performance uh, videos from Songs of Rebirth, but I also post about two instructional videos a week over at my YouTube channel. You can find it just by searching Jeremy Siskin. And uh, I have a lot of summer performance and teaching dates coming up, including that'll be at the Port Townsend uh, Jazz Workshop uh, under the direction of John Clayton this July. So you can check all, out all those dates at jeremysiskin.com. Beautiful. Jeremy, man, it was great to catch up with you. Hopefully we can do it again in much, much better times. But good, good luck with the album and everything that comes forward. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Jeremy for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Com. And for everything Joe Domino related, go to joedomino.com and there you can donate to the Neon Jazz cause through PayPal or Patreon. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. I break quarantine for you. Neon Jazz.